people are being admitted all the time to this session. Um, so we're just, you know, there's a, there's a, it is exactly five past, so we'll just allow people to, to continue to join a little bit. Um, and after a couple of minutes, I'll do a few introductions. I hope you're all enjoying um, defining your second career so far. There have certainly been some really, really stimulating, thought-provoking and um, interesting sessions so far. I've, I've, I've been, on, um, been on all of them so far and um, really enjoyed what I've heard. I hope, I hope you have too. Okay, people are still continuing to join. I'll give it one more minute and then we'll make a start. Okay, I'm going to make a start now. My, my, my computer tells me that it's six or seven minutes now past um, 11. Um, for those of you who may have missed the, the introductions at the beginning, um, I'm going to introduce myself first and then and there's a couple of other work, work Avenue people on this session, so I'll, 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 I'll introduce them too. Uh, my name is Emma May. Uh, my job title at Work Avenue is Director of Operations and Employment. And what that means is that I have um, some level of responsibility to um, uh, look after the operations and manage work avenue, make sure its direction is appropriate and, and we're, um, everything we do is, 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 is supporting our CEO, Debbie Sheldon. Um, I also head up, who's, who's on the course, she just, uh, if you saw her, she just uh, waved. <laughs> She'll introduce herself a little bit more in a minute. Well, she did say hello before. Um, it also means that I, I head up our employment team, which means that every service intervention that we offer in Work, uh, Work Avenue to our job seeking clients um, is my responsibility. So all our one-to-one -one sessions, our advisor team, our series of workshops, our series of training courses, um, our webinars, and of course our very, very important jobs board all come under my area of responsibility, but I'm supported in that by the most superb and wonderful team um, at the same time. Um, I have um, a wonderful team working with me. Um, you may have met some of my, um, my uh, advisor team. Uh, one of them for certain is on this call now, Hannah Dehar, and you can probably hello. see Hannah. She just said hello and she's, uh, she's positioned herself very, very um, uh, forcefully um, in front of a Work Avenue logo. So she should be very, very visible um, to all of you. Um, Debbie Sheldon, our CEO, who I also work very closely with, is on the call. She's muted at the moment, but she also has a Work Avenue background behind her. Um, I'm <laughs> giveaway working from home, as you can see, in, in accordance with many others at the moment. Um, I have my dining room behind me, so huge apologies for that. Um, hopefully what I'll say is, is um, uh, not going to distract you from, from the background that I have on the, on, on the call today. I'm running a session today um, called, um, Is Age Just a Number? So often, and in so many walks of life, that is exactly what we do say. Well, age is just a number. I don't feel any older. Um, I'm exactly the person I used to be um, on the inside. And I believe I look that way on the outside as well. Um, and people around you start to snigger and are very polite about it. But in our hearts of hearts, we do believe that age is just a number. But is it when it comes to earning a living, finding a job, moving on to your next career pathway, either because you want to or because you have to? I'm running this session today because um, I'm actually quite old myself. Well, you can probably tell that by looking at me. Um, I've been around the block a few times, as you can see by looking at me. Um, therefore, everything that I'm going to say, I say um, professionally, but I also say it personally from having been there as well. And, and the, the beauty of getting older is that A, I feel um, I, I can run this session a little bit. I feel um, 
much more in the zone um, and on top of my game because of that. Now, what I'm now going to do is share my screen. So hopefully that, um, that um, is going to be uh, something that uh, is quite straightforward. Um, hopefully you can all see that um, I've got on. Um, Hannah, perhaps you could just nod or shake your head and let me know that the screen sharing has worked. Yes, it has, that's great. So defining your second career is our, is our event today. Is age just a number is my session. Let's take a look at what we're gonna be looking at this morning. We're going to start off by looking what the issues are about age. Um, we're then going to move on to the pitfalls. And I have to say that there are pitfalls. This is um, some of what I'm going to say today uh, might touch a nerve. Um, I, if, if it does, I apologize for that. Let's see where we take that. And hopefully we'll come out the other side a little bit stronger because the final part we're going to, to look at today in our session is what we can do about it. So let's look at the issues. Let's discuss some of the warts that go with this and then what we can do about it. I'm really, really happy to take questions um, throughout the session. Um, please don't be shy to ask a question. Um, if you have a question about something that I'm saying, the chances are somebody else also has exactly the same question. So your question won't be stupid. It will be my, um, I, I just won't have considered something properly. So I would really, really welcome your questions. And furthermore, I would welcome your questions at the point that question is interesting to you. So I would ask you to put that question on the chat. Hannah's going to be monitoring the chat for me and she's going to hopefully find a moment to inter inter interject as I'm speaking um, to ask those questions um, and I will try and address them as we go. Um, so, so don't be shy with your questions and I would actually say the more questions you ask, um, the better our session can be, the better, the more interactive can be. Um, you know, we, we're all sort of remote at the moment, we don't have that buzz of being in the same um, space together and being able to feed off each other in quite the same way and the way we do that best is through the chat, through the questions. Please don't be shy. Okay. I have to issue a cautionary note as I kind of alluded to. Some of what I'm going to say in this session may not be pretty. Um, we're dealing with a fairly thorny issue. We're dealing with an issue that some of us are quite sensitive about. Um, I, I've lost count over the years of the number of clients who've said to me, um, it's because of my age. I'm not being able to move forward. It's because of my age. Um, and, and sometimes I have to agree with them and sometimes I don't agree with them. Um, but in doing so, when I address this with clients, we, it's, it's not always a pretty thing to discuss. It can be a little bit ugly, um, certainly a little bit sensitive. So kind of that's my cautionary note to you. I'm going to have to bear my soul a little bit. Um, and we're going to have to talk about things that um, I hope will end up being positive and moving forward. But in order to do that, in order to do that, we have to lay ourselves a little bit bare as we go. Now, take a look at the screen. Who are these interesting people? Um, some of you may recognize them if you're movie fans. Um, the gentleman on the left um, is a very, very well-known Hollywood actor. In fact, one of the best known Hollywood actors, as I'm sure you've all recognized, um, a gentleman by the name of Robert De Niro. And in the, in, in, the, in the movie called The Intern, he plays the part of Ben. Ben being the intern. The lady on the right um, is also a very well-known Hollywood actress. She's called Anne Hathaway, and she played the part of Jules. Jules was his boss. So there we are dispelling um, in, in, you know, through this movie in a, in a lighthearted, slightly tongue in cheek way that appearances can be um, a little bit deceptive. Um, don't always, you know, at, at first glance, we would think exactly the opposite, but that's not the case in this instance. Actually, um, this, the, 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 I, from memory, I, I did see the movie, it was a number of years ago, um, and it was actually, um, she was the CEO of an online fashion site, um, and Ben was the intern, so very much out of his comfort zone. Um, he was a retired widower, I think, from memory. He had to find his way in a very new environment, and of course, this is Hollywood, he was able to do just that, um, and of course, the movie did end happily ever after, one way and another. So there's one little bit of dispelling. 
Now here's another image. Sorry, it's not slightly blurry. Um, I've blown it up possibly a little bit too big. I hope you can still uh, make out. Um, the gentleman in this image may not be quite so well known to you. Um, I don't know whether anyone does recognize him. He was in the media a couple of years ago. He's a name, um, his, his name um, is Joe Bartley. Probably still doesn't ring any bells with you. Joe Bartley is pictured in this um, image um, on the day he retired, aged 91. Um, he was a retired um, soldier, I think. He was in the army. Um, he took a job as a waiter in his local cafe somewhere in a Devon town. Um, he took a job as a waiter, aged 89. Um, so very physical job, very active job. Um, friends of mine who've worked um, in that industry will tell you the amount of steps you cover in a day serving on tables or in bars um, is well over 10,000, often can be as close to 20,000. So here's 89 year old Joe Bartley doing just that in the cafe um, on the day he retired, aged 91. He's certainly someone who, who busts through our myths about um, age being just a number. Um, I'm sure he made a massive contribution in his workplace. Emma, I've had a few questions. Go ahead. Um, so first one, I have lots of interpersonal and communication skills, but hate social media. Can I work around this? Okay, well, thank you for your question. Who asked the question? First name only will be fine. Um, Ju Judith. Judith, thank you for your question. Um, the first answer I'm going to give you is the positive one, which says um, it depends on um, what job you're going for. So, for example, if you are going for a job as a veterinary nurse, where I don't know why I thought of that, um, where you're working with sick animals, you probably don't need to have so much social media skills. It's all about how you care for the animals. Um, but I'm gonna, I, I hope you were all on um, David Kaplan's um, opening address this morning, his keynote address, where he actually referred to contemporary skills. And he said, really, um, and this is where my cautionary note comes in at the beginning, for many, many jobs, there is no way of avoiding some aspect of contemporary technology at least, and many aspects also of contemporary technology. So you may have great communication skills. I hope you have, because it's certainly gonna get you a long way in your job search um, and in life as well, for that matter. Um, if you want to use those jobs, for those, those skills rather, for example, in a role as a receptionist, I, I have no idea what your particular pathway is or desired pathway, but let's just assume you've got great communication skills, you'd like to be a receptionist. The chances are you may have to use um, technology when you're in a reception role, you may have to use the um, office systems, um, and you may be charged also with a little bit of social media, very few jobs rely on a person having one single skill set and none other to support it. So honestly, my advice to you would be, be brave, embrace it a little bit, um, and, and, and try and upskill a little bit, and we'll come on to that a little bit later. Any other questions, Hannah? Yes, um, so I've got a question from Charles. If <coughs> age isn't a number, then why was I advised to remove the fact that I was in university in 1982 from my CV? Well, I firstly didn't say it wasn't an issue. I put a question mark at the end of it, and we're certainly going to be discussing those issues. Um, you're quite right, Charles. Um, I am going to um, allude to certain aspects about the CV a little later on. Um, I, I would also endorse that I might want to do that and take that off. Um, age can be a number, which is what we're going to come on and address. Um, so yes, I think the advice you were probably given, I would agree with, and we'll talk about that a little later on, if you can suspend that until we reach that point in the, in the session today. Thank you. And should I go for another question? If there is another, sure. And then we'll probably move on a little. There's quite a few coming through. Um, from Leonard, how do you convey extensive skills and particular experience over more than 50 years, which enable me to uptake speedily a knowledge of the organization and its needs and requirements? We'll come on to the CV. I, I, I assume, Leonard, you're talking about putting that on a CV. And if that's the case, we'll come on to the CV. And of course, there is another session on CV. And we in Work Avenue can help you in a very, very precise way with you and your CV. However, I would always say your starting point on CV should look at the demands of the job. And those are the factors that you need to reflect clearly on your CV, not every single thing that you've ever done in your working life, which, of course, is the temptation. 
Your CV is not your autobiography. It is not a running history of everything you've done in your career, much of which has been stellar and interesting. Um, but instead, it's your advert. It's the means by which you sell yourself simply for the job that you're going for. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, Hannah, is there a quick question or should I do you think it might be worth moving on now? Um, there's there's quite a few coming through, but we can move on and then I can. I think, I think we'll move on. I hope I'll yeah. be able to address some of these. And I thank you all for, for being so engaged and asking so many questions. You are very welcome to make them as controversial as possible. I, I do regard this as probably the most controversial session um, that we're running during the course of the morning. So let's just talk for a minute about what the issues are with, with, with ageism in the workplace or potential ageism in the workplace. Um, the good news is that, 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 that ageism is a, is a protected feature under, under discrimination law. So there was an Age Discrimination Act in 2006, which said that it was unlawful to discriminate, harass, or victimize job applicants or employees on the grounds of their age. Well, ain't that good news? Um, it was followed up uh, by the Equality Act um, in 2010 that said that age as we know, along with a certain other um, series of protected characteristics was exactly that it was protected. So if someone tells you that you haven't got a job um, because you're too old, or by the way, because you're too young, um, that's illegal. That's, a, that's, that's not a reasonable or lawful way of um, uh, rejecting you from a job in the same way that they can't say we're rejecting you because you're black or we're rejecting you because you're disabled or we're rejecting you because you're Jewish or Sikh or whatever it happens to be. These are all protected characteristics and it's illegal to do so. That's great news, the law protects us. Of course, what happens in reality can be quite another matter. And many of us on this session today know exactly that. So let's, let's look at some um, myths or truths about potential, about older workers in the workplace. Um, I have to say, you know, when I was a younger worker, it would have been very difficult for me to address these things. But um, my next birthday, which is approaching in less than two months, I will be, all I will tell you, because a lady never reveals her age, but all I will tell you is that I'm, I'm swiftly heading towards 60. So I feel very, very in my zone to be able to address these issues. I am an older worker myself. And by the way, in my workplace, I'm surrounded by a lot of much, much younger workers. So myths or truths? Again, we, we'll ask the questions. We'll all have our own thoughts about this. Older workers engage less in learning and development. Well, I'm going to say that maybe is a truth, but I hope it's a myth. Um, to, to, to the lady whose name, uh, I think it was Judith, who asked the question about great uh, communication skills, but um, not so great um, uh, digital media, social media skills. L&D, learning and development, get on board with social media, become a person who does engage with that. Older workers are too old fashioned. Are they? I don't know. Some of them maybe, some of them not. So if that is the perception that some people may have about us as older workers, then we have to make sure that we are not old fashioned. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be down with the kids with everything we do, but it certainly means that we have to be up to date. We have to be contemporary. David Kaplan referred to this. You know, he said kicking and screaming, he's had to learn new technologies in, in order to hit, for him to address the new workplace. It's not good enough for him to hide behind what he did before. He has to be out there and learning it. So don't be old fashioned. Um, are less physically able? Well, I'm going to certainly put that one in the myth category. Uh, there are some people who are physically able. There are some people who might not be. Um, many jobs, um, arguably in today's world, um, you know, don't require that of us. And if we happen not to be a physically able person, um, we're not going to go for a job that requires us to be so. So it's just not a factor. Less keen to embrace new technology, kernel of truth there, as in less engaged to engage, uh, less engaged, less in, uh, engaging less in L and D, um, but make it a myth, be a person who does engage. The next one is a little bit controversial. Older workers are more ponderous, sometimes lack energy, enthusiasm, passion, um, more slow and considered in what they do. Now, Whilst I'm not going to say that every older worker does that, 
I am going to put it out there that I think there is some truth to this. I think as we get older, we do become more considered in our approaches. We do things a little bit slower. I'm not saying we're slow, but I'm saying that perhaps we do things a little bit slower than perhaps our younger colleagues um, in the workplace. I certainly see that um, when I look and see how some of my younger colleagues address um, certain tasks they have to do in the workplace. They do them quicker than me. Um, there's a downside to doing them quicker, as I'm, I'm sure many of you want to point out, you know, hair and tortoise approach. The hair isn't always right. Sometimes the tortoise has more wisdom, can do it better. But don't necessarily rule that out because people's perceptions are their reality. Um, and if people consider that you're more ponderous and lack energy, then you're not going to be attractive in the workplace. So make sure that you don't come across that way. Well, we know that it's a myth that older people are more financially secure, if only we want to say. Um, the reason so many of you are on this, um, this event today, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, is, 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 is precisely because you want to work, you need to work, um, and sometimes it's for the love of it, but more often than that, it's to pay your bills, plain and simple. Um, and we know that we don't necessarily need high powered roles or are not going to stay if we don't get those high powered roles. Um, no, those are, those are definitely myths, I would say. But there is a skew towards contemporary industries in some instances being skewed towards younger employees. Take AI, AI artificial intelligence, coding, the tech industries for certain. Now, I would turn around to you and say, well, some industries that are booming, such as healthcare or care itself, don't necessarily require younger workers. You might turn around to me and say, you're not interested in those, in those sectors. I, I would hear that. Um, but it's not necessarily true to say that every industry requires younger workers. There are some fairly startling facts we have to think about, um, you know, in today's world. In, in 2015, um, a DWP report said that by 2022, now that was seven years on then, it's only one year on now, or one and a half years on now, there will be 700,000 fewer workers who are young, but 3.7 million more people in the 50 to, to, to 68 year old age bracket. Do we think that might have an, uh, a, you know, an, an impact on workplace behavior? Quite possibly. Um, by the same token, the government have missed recruitment targets for teachers in um, critical STEM subjects. That's science, technology, um, I can't remember what the, engineering and maths. In other words, the sciencey and mathsy fields. Um, so there's an opportunity for anyone who has that background. But look, in Silicon Valley, they are recruiting, you know, some of us would say children. The average age is 31 years old, um, uh, which is even younger than the median age of the US workforce. Um, there's so much to think about when we look at this, some of this positive um, and some of it negative. Okay, that paints the picture. Is it bleak? Is it positive? I think some of you might be sitting on this thing and saying, oh goodness, I don't know where I'm gonna go from here. It's fairly bleak one way or another. Let's think about some of the things we can do about it. Before I do that, Hannah, do you, are there any other questions that you'd like me to address at this stage before we move on to the second uh, part of the, um, the um, session? There's quite a lot of conversations going on, so just bear with me. I'll just yeah, go ahead. roll upwards. Um, uh, so from Rosalyn, um, a lot of writing courses I am fully qualified for also ask for digital skills, Google Analytics, keeping the website updated, et cetera, and often with experience across all platforms. I can do a bit of this and I can learn the other things, but of course they always want someone job ready. I feel like I'm being held back by this requirement. How do I get around this so I can go for jobs before I've requalified? Yeah, well, firstly, Rosalind, good for you for um, embracing the technologies and, le and learning it and engaging with it. You know, it, it, that's the first step done. Um, keep doing that, don't stop. Um, the more you engage, the more you do, the more you take one step in front of the other and keep on moving towards your skills and upskilling and everything, the better. Um, it's the classic, it's the classic conundrum. You can't get a job without experience. You can't get experience without a job. It, it, it's, 
I think it's what's commonly known as a bugger, actually. It's very, very difficult. Um, look for opportunities where you can um, engage in volunteering. That's the first thing. Um, not obviously within the Jewish community, but also beyond the Jewish community, because you're, you're engaging in skills that will take you in a very wide workplace. So look for volunteering where that might be the case. Um, talk to your network, ask people to give you an opportunity, you know, engage. And of course, any experience that you gain from a voluntary perspective can quite legitimately populate your CV as a job that you've held. The fact you weren't paid for it is absolutely neither here nor there and put it right at the top of the CV to, to, to showcase what you've done and delivered using exactly those skills. Hannah, any other questions? Um, so from Caroline, to what extent is it okay to present yourself as a junior in a new field or after a long gap to raise children, even in your 40s or later? As a, as a junior? A junior, yeah, in yeah. a new field. Again, it, it, it depends. If you're going into a new field, I think you have to recognise that you um, are effectively taking a dip down. Um, perhaps I should do it that way around so you can all see me the right way around. You know, you, 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 you rose, you took a career break, um, and you will be starting a, a new career um, as a junior simply because your level of experience is less than something else. It's all about matching yourself as best as possible to the demands of the job. Um, life is not perfect. When you go for an interview, someone will see that you're, I think you said in your 40s or whatever, um, as opposed to someone else being in their 20s. Um, it's all about the behaviors you convey, the enthusiasms, the synergy and the chemistry that you're also able to convey with the person you're talking to. It's absolutely appropriate to do that. Okay, I'm conscious that we're halfway through our time and I do want to make sure we cover all the ground. So I will come back to further questions if that's okay, Hannah. Um, but I'd like to also move on um, with um, some of our um, uh, material as well. What can we do about all this? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is that frankly, it's not fair. <laughs> it really isn't fair. Um, but whoever said life was fair, um, I'm, I'm afraid it, it, it just isn't. Life never is fair. Um, you know, and I think we just have to accept that to a point. The playing field never was level, isn't level, and never will be level. But all we can say is that we have an absolute responsibility to ourselves to do what we can about it and to learn to play the game better, whatever the game happens to be. So that game might be the upskilling game that we, we've alluded to quite a few times already this morning. It's, it's hard, I'm, I, I'm not saying it's easy. Um, it might be the presentation game we're playing. It might be the behavioral skills game we're playing. Um, th th there are, it might be the, the, the outward confidence game that we're playing. Now, that's a really tough one because I know how people's confidence gets knocked by feeling that the whole market is against you um, and that it's all a bit hopeless, quite frankly. Um, and this year, you know, we've had all the extra blows that the, 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 the pandemic has created because the economy has absolutely nosedived. We all know that the economic backcloth is, you know, is, is poor at the moment. And, and that makes, you know, whatever problems we had before, because we felt that the recruitment market was against us because we're old, well, that's even harder today because of the pandemic. So I'm not saying that any of this is easy. In fact, I'm saying it's, it's really, really tough. However, we have a responsibility to ourselves to, to, to learn, to play the game better, to practice harder, to be the finest version of ourselves that we can be, because nobody else is going to be able to do that for us. So let's start with a few positives. We're old, well, ain't that wonderful because we have experience on our side. I've been in the working world for 35 years, just about. Um, so you probably know exactly how old I am. Um, I've been in the working world for 35 years. That, that is a, that, that is a monstrous amount of time. I've been in the world, the working world, longer than some of my colleagues have been alive by a long way. Um, I mean, on the one hand, that's shocking. But let me tell you something. I'm actually really proud of that. That's fantastic because I have got experience on my side. You know, there's very few things I haven't seen before. And when we have, you know, a little meltdown at work or a little crisis at work, very often they're of my making, let me tell you. I've been there before. I can take a deep breath. I can say, do you know what, I've, I've been there before. It will pass, it will be okay. We'll get through this one. 
that's what getting old gives you. It gives you that, that perspective, that confidence that you've been there, you've done that before, you've got knowledge on your side. I would like to think that those of us who are a little bit older um, have got stronger communication skills on our side. Um, we, we think about things, we don't shoot from the hip quite so much um, as a younger person can do. Um, I, I've worked with colleagues in the past who, who, who say the first thing that comes into their head sometimes, and that first thing um, sometimes is a great thing to say, and sometimes it really isn't a great thing to say, but once it's said, it can't be unsaid. Um, wisdom stops you doing that. M maturity stops you doing that. The other great thing we have on our side is we're reliable. Um, we don't go clubbing every night. Uh, I don't think, uh, well, none of us do at the moment, of course, but the virus will be over one day. Um, and our younger colleagues will all be celebrating until three in the morning in the clubs, but we won't be there. We'll be turning up for work reliably at nine o'clock the following morning. So there's a lot of aspects that we do have on our side. We have to be able to, however, to dispel some, some prejudices and misconceptions that we have about the contemporary world. Look at these two images. Who's the worker and who isn't? Now in my age group, we tend naturally to go for the image on the right, the gentleman lacing up his shiny polished brogue. It looks like he's wearing a suit as well. Um, and say he's the worker, he's going um, to his city job um, in his um, shiny shoes and sharp suit and um, addressing a day of work. We mustn't however be prejudiced against the gentleman, I think it's a gentleman, we don't know, it could be a lady on the right, um, who actually might also be going to work. Um, I thought very long and hard about what I was going to wear today and then the end just resorted to my favorite top. But actually what you don't know is that I'm wearing my tracky bottoms underneath because we're on Zoom and that's what we can do. Now, I haven't yet been brave enough to wear my tracky bottoms into the office, but let me tell you, plenty of younger people might do, and plenty of workplaces wouldn't bat an eyelid about that. Um, so there's lots of things changing about the contemporary workplace, and we have to be prepared to open our minds, open our eyes, and be alert to that, and cast aside any of our prejudices that we may have had. Hannah, do you want to um, address any more questions that may be on the, the, the chat at the moment? Yes, um, so I've got a question from Adam. Do you think that in the COVID affected marketplace that age will remain the same barrier? In the, in the what marketplace? COVID affected marketplace. The, the COVID marketplace. Well, I, I, I don't think, um, I think because um, there was, I wouldn't say that what I'm going to come on to say, and, and you'll see it, but I'll say it now anyway, is that whereas I don't necessarily think people's age is against them, I do sometimes think their lack of skills can be against them, their lack of behaviors, their lack of attitudes can be against them. And I think if you were, um, I don't think that's changing in the current workplace, the future workplace, or indeed the past workplace. Um, what we're gonna be talking about is how we can really become relevant to today's and tomorrow's workplace. That won't change whatever factors exist in the work, in, 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 the, um, in the landscape, the employment landscape at the time. Um, and another question, any thoughts about being seen as overqualified? Yes, um, we'll come on to that as well, but it's, it's a very, very good question. And, I, and actually, I think this is one of the hardest ones to address. Um, in a crowded job marketplace, crowded in the sense that one job goes up and 500 people might apply for it, um, or 300, or even 50 people might apply for it. Um, when that arises, and of course that's arising more and more in today's world because of the economic imperatives that we, we're living with at the moment. Um, the first job of the recruiter, be that the line manager or the recruitment consultant or anyone else, the first job of that person isn't to select the successful candidate, it's to lose from the recruitment process those people who are instantly unsuitable so they can concentrate on the smaller tranche of people who appear to be more suitable. So if your CV presents with far too much experience, or you want to go for a job as a sales executive, even though you were the sales manager, 
um, or whatever it happens to be. In other words, there is an aspect of overqualification and over experience to your personal portfolio. You have to show yourself to be the person that they're looking for. And that means only providing on your CV that information that is relevant to the job in question. Now, before you all start shouting at me and saying, but I mustn't lie on my CV, I agree with that. You, you mustn't lie on your CV. Lying never is the right thing to do. And we wouldn't suggest that or authorize that or condone that in any way. However, we would always say to you, try and match what the job demands with what your CV suggests. So I do think it's okay to dumb down a job title a little bit. I do think it's, a, and if you're applying for a job, as I, in the example I gave as a sales executive, then talk about the work you did to actually um, win business, to manage accounts, um, to sell to people, rather than managing the team who did that because that makes you out to be a person who hasn't got the right skills for the job. So do think carefully how you present yourself. I completely agree that some, um, some aspects to you are completely impossible to hide. And ultimately your age might be one of those factors. And certainly when you attend for interview as well, whether it's via Zoom, you know, I would love to think that you're all looking at me on the, on the screen at the moment and thinking, oh, she doesn't look a day over 21. Um, but I also know that's not true. I look many, many days, months, years, and decades over 21. Um, and that's just life. So, so, so we can cover, we can fudge certain things, some we can't. It's our responsibility to fudge the things that are irrelevant and cast them aside from our application, focusing ourselves absolutely on those things which absolutely match the demands of the job we're going for. So we become the person the employer needs us to be. Okay, let's move on a little bit for now. Um, and there will be time for questions at the, uh, the end. Some things to think about. Be honest with yourself. Um, you know, as, as I just said to you, you know, I, <laughs> in my previous statement, I would love to think um, that um, I look 21 still. I don't, I, I look my age, which is well into my mid to late fifties now. Um, and that's just um, life. That, that you know actually I'm proud of that I am in my mid to late 50s I've reached that point and I've brought so much along the way with me you know at, at the same time so 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 that's the honesty um so so do be honest with yourself both about who you are how you look um uh, we'll come on to that in a little bit um be honest with you about your skills. You know, we all know deep down whether we have got the skills for today's marketplace. That, that today's employment marketplace is not going to come and meet us. We have, because it doesn't have to, we have to meet it. They're not going to say, you know, so many times I hear um, a client of ours say, I just wish someone would give me a chance. That's all I need, someone to give me a chance and I'll be able to learn it. They'll, or I just need someone to teach me how to do it and then I'll be okay. It's not gonna work like that. Now, as I said before, it's not fair. I wish it did work like that, but it's not going to. So you can't be that person. You have to be the person that upskills yourself, um, that takes a look at how you present yourself, the polish. And as, in, you know, as I say, you know, we have to project the same level of polish and professionalism as our younger colleagues do. With the cautionary note, that polish and professionalism may not look like it did in a, in a workplace in days gone by. Um, it's not gonna be the best example I give, um, but look at the um, Boris Johnson's key advisor. Um, uh, I think we all know who I'm talking about, Mr. Cummings, um, you know, look how he goes to work. I mean, he looks like an absolute scruff um, he looks closer to um, the person, he looks closer to uh, the, 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 this particular person in sneakers and dirty old tatty jeans than he does to this person. Um, but we certainly can't say that he hasn't got a handle on today's workplace. He's also well into his 50s. Um, we can't say he hasn't got a handle on today's workplace. Now, <laughs> he was the first example I could think of of someone who dressed for today's workplace. And we may have our issues with uh, Dominic Cummings. Um, but that wasn't the example I was giving. It was more about being, you know, 
having that level of polish and professionalism that works for today's workplace. Think about how people speak, how they look, how they, how they address the tasks that they do. Um, having said that, do believe in yourself. Um, you know, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to either. So start believing yourself, trust yourself, start being a person um, that, um, you know, is proud of what you've brought, your, brought to the point this far, proud of everything you've achieved, um, and, you know, has something to offer the contemporary workplace. Um, it's a positive factor. However, at the same time, don't fall into a belief that the workplace owes you something. As I've said, it doesn't. It doesn't owe you anything. It's not going to. Um, it's not going to meet you halfway. You have to go all the way to meet it if you're going to have any degree of success in the workplace. And that's just how it is. It ain't fair, but it's how it is. So that's what we have to do. Um, and I would always say, actually, um, don't let your age become an issue, but other people might wake it one, make it an issue. And if that's the case, you stand up tall, you stand up proud, and you engage in a positive way with that. Um, I'm the oldest person in my workplace. Um, I'm quite proud of that, actually. Um, I can see my colleague Debbie smiling on the Zoom. Um, let me tell you that my Debbie Sheldon, who is my closest colleague in the workplace, is a whole decade younger than me. Now, on the one hand, that utterly horrifies me. On the other hand, it makes me so proud to think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still there, and I'm still okay. Um, now, that's to tell you that it is possible, it can be done, but you have to meet the workplace. It's not going to come and meet you. Um, now, this is a really, really important point, and I think... Um, probably this goes to the heart of just about everything we're talking about and its relevance. Um, sometimes when we get a little older, we start to lose our relevance to the workplace and that's when we start fighting and um, clutching at things, hoping the workplace will come and meet us. Um, it's all about our lack, of uh, uh, our lack of relevance. I would say, um, Embrace technology. We, we've, David Kaplan talked about this. I've referred to it. It's, it's come up in the questions as well. Um, if anything, the, the experiences we've had in the pandemic have shown us that technology is not going to become anything less. In fact, it's only going to become a whole lot more. Um, it, it's just not going to work to say I'm better with the quill pen and the abacus. Um, because the quill pen and the abacus aren't used quite so much anymore. Um, it, you know, people use very, I look at how my colleagues um, em, embrace technology to do everything and I copy and you need to do the same as well. Be sparing of the glory days. The glory days back in the 1980s when you probably reached um, the job that you loved the most, that you were most on top of your game with, um, that you, you were, you know, on the crest of a wave in that job. You know, when I was the head of HR for Marks and Spencer, when someone looks at your CV, they see that was in 1985. Um, it, 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 I know how proud you are of that. I also had jobs like that in my past. It makes you look like you come from another era. So, so be proud of it, but contextualize it always contextualize. And it's always better to focus on things that happened a little bit more recently um, and not what happened decades ago. Uh, we've talked about social media already and using, um, uh, using your digital skills to enhance what you do, how you do it. Just go hell for leather with technology. It's, it's gonna be the way, it's always going to be the way. Um, now, the question was asked earlier about, um, you know, your resume, your CV, um, and looking at, um, uh, you know, making it sort of age proof to um, an extent. The received wisdom is don't go back more than 10 years as a kind of rule of thumb, um, because what you did um, before 10 years ago might not be relevant. But if I refer you back to the glory days, maybe your best job was um, quite a number of years ago, or quite a number of decades ago. Um, so it's always a hard one to think about what you should do there. Um, 
And at the same time, if you are proud of your earlier career um, and you want to sort of uh, showcase that level of gravitas, I think that's okay. So everyone's CV is individual, so I can't comment on a specific person's CV here, but I would say the more recently you've done something, the more relevant it's going to be. So to that end, I would certainly make sure that you devote a lot more credence and time and space on your CV to contemporary activities that you've addressed in a contemporary way. And perhaps refer to those glory day jobs in a section lower down your CV called earlier career. Or if you're really brave, and by the way, I'm not, my CV does make reference to my earlier career, um, have them in a section called earlier career where you don't um, go into the detail of what you did in those jobs because the methodologies used 30 years ago are not relevant to today, they just aren't. Um, but if you were an HR director, you still might want someone to know that. Unless you're going for a job now as an HR executive, in which case you have the perfect opportunity to lose that from your CV altogether. It's all about the job you're going for. Um, so that's the sublim subliminal references. Um, if we talk about the issue of dates on your CV, um, some people say remove dates because things can be discovered. Well, if the date is in the last 10 years, A, you don't want to remove it. Um, you can remove dates from when you got your qualification. So I graduated in the early 80s. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have had a degree, but it was, it was um, a long, long time ago. Um, I might well remove the date of my graduation from my CV, um, but be prepared in an interview for someone to actually ask you that question or be prepared for someone to go on your LinkedIn and look at that information. So I actually don't think it particularly matters um, to do that. Um, I think it's probably better to remove earlier jobs um, as a blanket rule, but of course blanket rules don't work for an individual um, as we've just discussed. So if you have issues about an earlier career or about a very long career, um, I would suggest that you engage with um, me um, or a member of my team, and I'm happy to talk, you know, you know, you, my email address is very easy to find, it's on our website, and so are the email addresses of all my colleagues. Um, engage with us, um, and we will be able to look at you as a person, as an individual, with your own agenda, your own pathway forward, rather than in this very generalist sense. Um, and the final point says, you know, keep your CV concise and focused. Contemporary is really, really important. And as I said before, your CV is not your autobiography. It's very tempting to make it so, but it isn't. Your CV is instead your advert. It's the means by which you, by which you sell yourself for the job you're going for. It's that level of match to the job you're going for that is really going to be the important factor. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to address. Many, many years ago, we had a prime minister in this country. And I can say many, many years ago because shockingly it was many years ago. And that prime minister was called Tony Blair. And Tony Blair, a very famous quote of his, Tony Blair's quotes was, ask me about my three main priorities for government. And I will tell you education, education, education. Many of you will remember that quote. I certainly do. Um, so with the greatest respect and apologies to Tony Blair, I'm going to crib that off Tony Blair and say there is nothing more important for an older applicant. And I'm using the word old, not mature or anything else. And I can use it because I am. Um, there is nothing more important for an older person to consider when they're job searching, when they're defining their second career, then energy, 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 or energize, energize, energize. Now, I, I alluded to this earlier. I did say, um, you know, we do become a little bit more ponderous, a little slower um, as we get older. Um, and that subliminal perception we create therefore is of a person who isn't going to hit, be able to hit the ground running to get into the workplace to do things employers want people who get stuff done and if you come across a little bit ponderous a little bit too considered you don't create that perception of somebody who can get stuff done and subliminally you've ruled yourself out the game just look at the way younger people talk act address tasks use technology it's really, really important. Um, and I would say, 
on the previous slide, that context of relevance is so important. And on this, energy. Those are the two takeaways that I think you should um, really, really embrace from the session today. Appearances are important. Now, I'm sorry to say that, but they really, really are. Um, people's perceptions are their reality. So, you know, if we dress in a certain way that makes us look a bit fuddy-duddy, now I'm not going to say that anyone does that, but if we do that, we're creating a perception about ourselves. Um, if we adopt um, a mode of speech that is a little bit old fashioned, and I'm, you know, my colleagues take the mickey out of me a lot for the way I talk in the workplace. They think I'm a walking dictionary or some nonsense like that. They really don't know what they're talking about. Um, but think these things are important because actually you need to sound relevant to your workplace, relevant to today's world, um, and engage in a way that people are going to be able to visualize you taking a seat, taking a place in today's workplace. So I'm going to close with a few final thoughts. Having laid it bare, warts and all, about some of the issues we, we face and some of the things we can do about it, I, I, I want to give a hopeful note. Um, we'll come through it. We'll weather the storm. Now, the storm is the fact that we're looking for a job, um, um, you know, at, at a midway point in our career. Um, it applies also um, to the, I actually wrote this before um, the coronavirus, is, uh, but added this point in, you know, we, we, that, that's a storm as well. We'll weather all of it. We'll come through. We're old enough to know that we will come through all of these things. You can only ever be yourself, but you have an absolute responsibility to be the finest version of yourself you can possibly be. Um, and whether your age matters, whether you make it relevant, make, whether you make it irrelevant, think of all the amazing positives that you can bring to the table, to the recruitment um, uh, place that you find yourself in. Everything obviously has to be contextualized. Um, you're a brand, make yourself a brand. Think about how you sell yourself, the positivities, how you present, the, the perceptions that people have of you at all times. Um, know your strengths, but think carefully about which of those strengths are relevant. You know, there's um, a perceived wisdom about strengths and weaknesses. And we say to ourselves, oh, I've got to work on my weaknesses because they're not great. Um, it's very, very true. But I would say also work on your strengths, make them even stronger with the proviso that they're right for today's workplace, specifically the roles that you happen to be interested in. And seek continual improvement always. Um, uh, that will never change, uh, you know, lifelong learning, lifelong skills development, it has to be the way forward. Um, and I want to thank you, it's, it's um, just a little bit before um, uh, 11 o'clock, I'm going to stop the screen share now. Um, thank you all for, um, for bearing with me through this session. Um, I think we have just a couple more minutes to ask um, a final question. I'm sorry I've had so much to say on the subject. I hope it's been relevant and interesting. Hannah, any final question you'd like to ask? Um, sure, so from Karen, what about gaps in your CV? We did address this um, a little bit on the CV session and we'll address this before, um, um, and Amanda addressed it actually in the, on the recruitment session. Um, Mention a gap, always address a gap. Um, it depends what the gap's for, when the gap was. Um, if it's a recent gap, um, and if it's a personal reason, state what it was for, but don't go into too much detail. Stand proud always for who you are and what you're doing. We can only be the finest version of ourselves, And if that meant a gap that may be for a health reason, a caring reason, who knows what reason, um, that's the gap you had. Doesn't stop you being relevant and contemporary. Um, and from Rosalind, how do we hide um, age on LinkedIn? Um, I don't, oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I don't think you necessarily can because LinkedIn asks for ages. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Make sure your picture is um, contemporary, fun, engaging, conveying positivity, um, and that, that what you write about yourself in your profile or, or, or the headline piece is relevant and sharp and positive. Um, most people, do go back a little way. Um, they will have seen your CV first. Um, they are unlikely to reject you based upon a LinkedIn profile. They're going to be looking more closely at your CV, make your CV relevant. And um, it, my, my CV will tell you, my, my LinkedIn profile will tell you exactly when I graduated. You'll know exactly how old I am. 
And um, what roles or sectors value grey hairs and experience the most? Any and all. I would say any and all, depending upon what the role is going, for, what the role is you're going for, how you sell yourself, and how relevant you can be for that role and that industry. Um, I would, you know, it 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 doesn't. Don't let this thing define you. It's a part of who you are, and sell it positively. But it's it's it's, you know. Go for the roles that are right for you because they're right for you. And because more importantly, you're right for them. And make sure you tell the employer through your CV, through your application, that you are right for them. Can I ask a few more or are we? Oh, I think we're at 12 o'clock, Hannah. Yeah. I think we have to stop. You all know where to find me. You all know where to find Hannah. You all know where and how to reach out to any member of the Work Avenue team. I'm going to thank you all so much for, for joining me this morning. I really enjoyed um, delivering the session. I hope I wasn't too painful um, in terms of what I was talking about to you. Um, engage with me personally. We can discuss in more detail on another occasion. I'd be very happy to. Um, I think now we have a choice between um, our two sessions, which are building a business, getting you started. That's if any of you are thinking of um, going it alone um, or harnessing the power of LinkedIn. So I look forward to welcoming you to either of those sessions. And I thank you for today. <laughs>